All right, guys, so, so far we've gone over the agnatha group of fish, which are your jawless fish. Today I wanted to go over the chondrichthys, which are your sharks, skates, and rays. So what chondra actually means here is cartilage, and anytime you see ichthys, that means fish. So these are your groups of fish that have a skeleton made of cartilage instead of bone. So make no mistake, that doesn't mean they are weaker or anything like that. It actually gives them some flexibility when they're swimming and stuff. So there are uh, uh, fewer than 700 species. Um, they've been around for a very long time. Sharks and skates and rays are considered very ancient creatures. Um, they have jaws, unlike the ones that we've gone over um, last week. So let me tell you some differences between them and regular fish. Um, they have something called a placoid scale, which is actually a modified tooth that is embedded into the skin, and they point backward and their skin feels like rough sandpaper. So unfortunately, since we can't dissect the shark together, um, but if you could feel a shark, like if you would run your hand from the nose to the tail, it would feel smooth, but if you ran it the opposite way, it would feel really rough. And that's because of these particular scales here. Okay, some other characteristics, um, they have visible gill slits and all groups have five gill pairs except one group has six. They are more ventral, more on their belly side. They have a spiracle which also allows water to enter and exit. Uh, their mouth is more on their belly side and their fins are very rigid. So this joke up here. And the reason it is inaccurate is because um, sharks will continually get teeth their entire lifetime. You know how we have two sets, right? They're called deciduous. You lose them and then you get another set and then that's it, unless you get some fake ones. Um, sharks continually get teeth their entire lifetime. Okay, so let's go over the skates and rays. Um, they have highly developed pectoral fins, so it makes them um, swim smoothly through the water. They mostly hang out on the bottom. Uh, remember, that means they're called benthic. So the stingrays actually have a poisonous barb near the tip of their tail. Um, they're found on our coast, Gulf of Mexico, um, all the way down to Brazil. And then the skates have no spines. And they're found in temperate waters along both coasts. I know a lot of people who catch skates either inadvertently or whatever, actually use them for bait sometimes. But both of these creatures eat crustaceans and mollusks in the subtidal zone. So that's why we see them quite frequently. So here's some examples. The top two pictures are skate, or sorry, rays, and the bottom two are skates. Um, this kind is actually very common off of our coast. But you can see their spiracles, their mouth, and these of course are their gills. Um, there's its tail, and of course the poisonous ones have a little barb there. That's what happened to Steve Irwin, right? Okay, there's also this thing called a sawfish, and I wish we were in school I could show you. Miss Bennett actually has um, a fossil from a sawfish, but they're found from Virginia down to Brazil as well, and in the Gulf of Mexico. They have over 24 teeth that stick out on the side of, of their snout, and they use it like a sword. So they'll go into a school of fish and just start slaying that around like it's a sword and then they'll cut the fish in half and then they'll eat them. Very, very ancient, a shark member there. Okay, so now let's talk about some sharks. Of course, when I think of a shark, I think of like the ones on Nemo, like Bruce or whatever, and then the big scary ones, the tiger sharks, the great white sharks, but they can vary in size a lot. There's about 350 species. The smallest one is a pygmy shark, and this is a picture of him here. And keep in mind that's somebody's hand. And then the largest one is called a whale shark, and that's this guy over here. And I just like this picture because there's a car in the background. It kind of gives you a, a comparison. Um, but the reason it's called a whale shark is just because of its huge size. It is still a shark, but it's not an aggressive shark. That can get up to 45, 50 feet or something like that. Okay, so shark diversity. Some of them are actually basking sharks, which means they just go around and they strain their food or filter feed them, kind of like this guy over here. Notice he doesn't have any dangerous teeth in there. Um, nurse sharks and leopard sharks are bottom dwellers and they kind of crush uh, shelled organisms on the bottom. This is a um, one of those over here. They're very common in some home fish tanks because they can tolerate the differences in salt very well. 
Okay, and then of course aggressive and dangerous sharks, the two most the three, sorry, most dangerous ones are tiger sharks, bull sharks, and great white sharks. Um, they are very aggressive. They'll eat sea turtles, seals, other sharks, and they have attacked and eaten humans. The great whites are considered the most dangerous to humans. They get about 12 to 15 feet long, but over um, a ton, and they have sharp serrated teeth. So that's why they do a lot of damage when they actually bite. Okay, all right, so I want to show you some structures that are on sharks, and then we'll get to the um, virtual dissection eventually. So they have something called a lateral line system, which basically can pick up sound vibrations. It looks like a line going down the side of their body. Other fish have these too, not just sharks. Okay, then they also have something called the ampullae of Lorenzini which this picture is depicting that here. It's all those red dots. They are not red on a shark. They actually look like little blackheads to give you a visual. Um, they can sense electric fields. So like when fishes have muscle contractions or different things, they can sense that. So if you've been to an aquarium and you have seen um, the divers swimming with the sharks, if you'll notice, they have like that hammer looking thing in their hand. And if the shark gets too close for comfort, if you'll notice what they do with that hammer looking thing is they will like bop them on the front of their nose or kind of push them away on their nose. Because what it does, it sends like a tingling sensation through the shark because of these um, electric field field sensation things there, and it kind of um, makes the shark go away. Now, one of the things they say if you have a shark attacking you is that you can kick it really hard in its nose. I'm not saying that's going to work, but I guess it would be worth a shot, and I understand like why that theory works. It's because of these ampullae of Lorenzini. Okay, if you can see the shark's brain, which I'm hoping the video we do on the dissection you can see it. It's actually pretty small for the size of the animal. However, two-thirds of the shark's brain is devoted to smell. So that's why they say that a shark can detect a drop of blood a mile away. Um, so they have all of these sensation systems that make them excellent hunters. Okay, um, they are the perfect predator. If you ask me, they have this streamlined body shape, very powerful muscles, very little fat on them. Their cartilage skeleton is super flexible. They have a really powerful caudal fin, which is the tail fin. It propels them through the water. They have several rows of teeth that keep replenishing. So that's why when you have some reject or whatever they call that stuff from PCS, uh, phosphate or nutrient or whatever it's called now, there's lots of teeth in there. They keep getting them back. And one of the coolest things about a shark, which I really wish you could experience that for yourself, is their liver has a lot of oil in it. And that's what helps them float. So you know how oil floats on top of water. Um, their liver is gigantic, and I will find a picture of that to show you. Um, and it's full of oil, it's super slippery when you have on your gloves and you're trying to dissect it. And the oil actually like builds up inside of its body. So I'm going to find a good picture of that for you. Other fish have something called an air bladder or a swim bladder, which basically they can fill with air or release the air. And that's how they can ascend and descend in the water. But sharks use this really oily liver to keep them afloat. Okay, so reproduction, um, they do get fertilized internally. The males have an organ on the outside that transfers sperm. I'll show you a picture of that in a minute. They're called claspers. Um, for some sharks, they develop internally and they give birth to live young. Um, not all of them though. Some of them still do lay eggs and different things. But this here is called a mermaid's purse. Miss Bennett also has a bunch of these in her room. Um, some skates and rays release these, and the eggs are inside of there. With hers, you can actually hear them shaking inside of there, and sometimes they come out. So the dogfish shark is the one that we would have dissected together. Um, its babies can develop for two years before being born, and sometimes they can attack the other siblings inside the mom if they're more advanced than the other ones, and then she would only give birth to one. Okay, so here's a picture of a male shark here. So these are its um, pelvic fins. And these two things right here that the arrow is pointing to are called claspers. That's what actually um, 
delivers the sperm into the female. And there is an article here, which if it's still active, I will attach it for you so you can see it. But there are some species of shark that are going extinct. And they've actually tried to get sharks to um, mate in, in um, aquariums and stuff. And they've not had much luck. So they've actually like artificially inseminated some sharks so they could reproduce and keep their species propagated. Okay, so that's all I wanted to talk to you about on sharks. I will attach this video and a couple other things for you to do. And then the next lesson, we'll get into the bony fish. And we only have about two weeks left until it is time to end our semester. So I'll get as much in as possible. For those of you that are doing work, I really appreciate it. And for those of you that aren't, I hope you reconsider. Um, I know that this sucks the way we have to do this. Um, I really wish I was in class with you guys, but I am trying to at least give you guys some interesting lessons and stuff while you're home. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, you know you can always email me. Take care.